so just a couple of clips here, really looking at this left spot right here. Again, this is a receiver doing it, so it's a skill you got to teach everybody because you're going to want to use receivers and offensive players on your punt return team. But he's doing a good job motoring his feet, inching back. Defender releases the way he wants him. It's a one-arm jam. Now, at this point, he's still on top of the, of the uh, coverage player. Once that coverage player starts to get even with his hip, he needs to grab his left arm and rip it out of there so now he can get downfield. It's the same thing Milo was talking about when you leave that arm on him too long and all of a sudden you can get stacked. You can go from being in phase to out of phase real fast. Okay. So we look at it again right here. This is an outside linebacker for us. Okay. Again, he's played some man to man. Uh, so he has an idea of this technique to begin with, but he's already, you can see he's aligned trying to force a release this direction. Okay. And you can see he'll motor his feet. Guy works away. Now he can stab him. One arm jam right on his shoulder there. He's in a good spot. And you see him really do a good job of getting his eyes downfield now. And one Shock is now what you're going to use primarily on the inside. Okay, this is where you're coming off the ball, right? You're taking a hard step with, with, with your foot right down the midline of the punt team guy. So if I have a man, let's say I'm trying to set up a right return like this picture, I'm going to have my right foot up. So I can step with my left foot right down the midline of the defender and try and get two hands on him. Okay. Uh, and then from there, we're going to try and work now our mirror technique as long as we can and do the most work on the line of scrimmage that we possibly can. Okay. So this is, we didn't get a lot of film of this one. Um, so it's kind of hard, to, hard to see, but right here, he's going to now step with his left foot right at the crotch of the punt team member. And what that does guys, if the punt team member releases away, well, I'm in great position now, get on him, mirror him and widen him for a couple steps. If he tries to release to me, well, now I'm going to be in a balanced stance where I can then get my two hands on him and I'm in a great position to mirror him down the line for a lot longer. Okay. So this is just, you know, we, we got in the line and practice doing this. Okay. Again, really good job right here. Man gets to his hip, gets his eyes downfield, rips his left arm out. Uh, and so we'll, when you have time, we'll use frontal. Here's, here's what it looks like, guys. So looking really at the right right here, okay, you see this is, this is the matchup we're looking at. He's got time to make this decision. We're using pop-ups to just to give him a reference for where the returner is, okay? But he's doing a great job throwing his right hand in there to the front breastplate and able to slingshot his body around. It's good. If you can't get your, your, your near hand to the breastplate, you're probably going to block him in the back. Right, so that's a good indicator. Hey, if I can't get my hand there, I probably can't use this technique. Okay, I might have to use flyby, or I might have to use option C, which is turn around, find somebody else. Okay, but if I can get my hand to his breastplate, I can slingshot my body in front, okay, and then I'm in good position to make this block. Now, one of the things that I we got to do a better job at now is teaching the retrace. Okay, this defender is not just going to get blocked and stand still. Right, we, we can all agree on that, or at least we hope he doesn't do that. He's going to start, if the returner goes inside, he's going to start retracing back inside. Well, now at that point, I have to really do a great job of ripping my left arm through to maintain that relationship of ball me man. Okay, but just a couple clips of this drill. It's a half speed drill. Again, you see two of our offensive guys getting this done on the right here. One of our starting receivers throwing his right hand in the middle, or to the breastplate rather, slingshot his body around, getting into a good position. Okay, and at that point, we're trying to drive him out away from the return. Okay. Here's an example of it in a game, right? You see number three here do a great job with the soft shoe technique, motor in his feet, trying to force release outside. Okay, one arm jam. Okay, now he gets even with me. I'm going to rip my left arm out and get my eyes downfield. Okay, I'm not trying to put my hand on him the whole time. I'm trying to get downfield, get the right leverage. Okay, I'm 10 yards away from returner. I can get my hand in front. It's kind of sliding behind there. You got to do a better job with his right hand. But now I got it in front. I'm using frontal, and that's all it takes is just a second. Okay, we'll watch it again from the end zone. So you're looking at, at number three on the right side of your screen right here. Does a good job of locating. You can see him right here. He gets his eyes right here to the returner, knows where he is, so he can use this, this frontal technique. Okay, and now he is given, in Milo's words, he's given the returner a, a butt to run off. Okay, now the next part of it is I don't have time. I can't get my hand to his breastplate. Well, now what do I do? Well, well our next option is flyby. Okay, that's 
I've heard people talk about setting the high screen or hip hop hooray or, or whatever different word. That's, this is what that is now. Okay. So what we're doing, we're running down the field. Again, the guys in maroon here are on the return team. The guys in blue are on the coverage team. As you look at this drill, I'm running there and I'm going to give them that, that aiming point of I'm trying to take my near hand and push it through the tricep of the coverage man. When I do that, I'm going to turn my body and put my numbers, my back numbers on his body. Okay. So taking a look at it and the same drill setup. Okay. We'll look right here on this side. You got a linebacker doing this right here. He doesn't have time. He's going to do a great job pushing through the tricep, ripping his arms up in the air and giving his numbers right to the coverage man. Okay. Just a couple looks at it. Again, we did this. This is the first time introducing this. You know, day two, we're not even in pads yet. This was a, a three-quarter speed drill. And, and, guys, we do a great job here of, of tracking if we're going to have a high-intensity or low-intensity period uh, to, to be able to decide, you know, how much work each guy's getting. You know, we have the catapult systems that monitor, you know, what everything they do when they're out there at practice, how much they're running, how much the intensity is. And so we'll have different periods where we want to go high intensity versus low intensity. When we get to that competition period, that is oftentimes the fastest they will go all day. And it's short. There, you know, this competitions last six to eight seconds, but it is the fastest speeds we will pick up all day, which is great. Okay, so you guys get an example of flyby. Okay, this is um, when I was at UT a number of years ago, but you got a couple examples right here. We'll try and point them out as we go, but this – this guy right here that's off the ball, it's a great example of flyby. Okay, so you got number 26. You follow him all the way down the field. He gets beat, he's out of phase right now. Does a great job getting back to his leverage. And right here, he's just, just getting a piece of him right on the side, and throwing his arms up to get you that, that flyby, okay? And then now we're, we're off to the races. And guys, this is a huge game. The Texas-Oklahoma game is a big one. Uh, and this was my third year at Texas, and we had lost the first two games by more points than I'd like to admit. But this game was, was a big one for us, and we came back and won that third year, which was awesome. Okay. The third thing that, that, is, that is just as important is, guys, if we can't make the block, no block is better than a penalty, okay? Turn around, find somebody else. And, and the returner's got to make somebody miss, one. But two, you know, we got an example right here. This is, this is last season before I got here. You know, I think Elon finished about 83rd or 84th in the country in punt return. But had this return counted and not been called back for a penalty, it would have been top five. So just that, you know, one play, one penalty can make such a big difference, you know, throughout the course of a game. This, this game went into five overtimes. So imagine this not being called back. Again, looking at the – sorry, this person right here. Okay, we're getting the penalty right here, but this this is a big point, right? We don't have time, right? We obviously can't use frontal. Okay, my hands on his back, so I can't use flyby. I gotta stop. I gotta stop and turn around and find somebody else. Okay, and this return went all the way back, you know, to about the six yard line, but was called back. Okay, again, difference in in that ball game, difference in big rankings. The ball was was fumbled too. We recovered it, but still. You know, just to, to point out how important playing penalty-free is. Okay.